All right. There is the most amazing oh, sight in front of us right now. We're going to explain what's I'm, going on there. I'm just shoving a load of insulin in, actually, because for what we're about to do. Because there's a great story, and it's um, a young man who several years ago contacted me, well, connected with me on LinkedIn. Mm. Uh, and I've followed him ever since, really, um, because he had um, a, a, a terrible uh, illness which actually nearly killed him. Um, and left him with a fear of food, a PTSD, because he was ill every time he ate. Mm. Um, so he tackled that by, of all things, becoming a baker. And, and he's gone from strength to strength. And it is a remarkable story. It's Benji's Bonds. And Benjamin Michael is here with us this morning. It is really good to see you after this time. It's the first time we've ever actually met. Talk us through what actually happened to you. Oh, thanks, guys. Well, it's a pleasure to be here uh, this morning. So, yeah, my story really started uh, in the pandemic. Um, just before the lockdown, I became very gravely ill with digestive problems. Um, my stomach muscles just stopped working uh, and I was unable to digest food properly. Um, so literally every time I ate, I was either sick or I was in a lot of pain. Uh, after two years of that, literally, I then basically lost a load of weight. Um, I went from 11 stone to about 7 stone. Um, Heck. So, yeah, that was a very, very tough time for me. I mean, you were quite close to death at one stage, weren't you? Yeah, the, I mean, the doctors said to me, like, if you don't start eating, uh, mm. your organs are just going to shut down and you won't wake up. Mm. Um, and, you know, I was getting tested so many times for different, you know, various diseases and infections and nothing was coming up. And I think for me, that was the most stressful part was that Every time I ate, I was ill, and we couldn't find what the problem was, uh, particularly in the pandemic when you couldn't go and see doctors, you couldn't go and get appointments. Of course. So how did that lead to baking and really your cure, not just physically but, but mentally as well? Yeah, so, I mean, the, I'd say probably the darkest time for me was actually after I recovered physically, mentally then, uh, the stress of, you know, dealing with that led me to have an actual fear of food itself. Mm. Um, so, you know, even if someone put a plate of food in front of me, I would break down and have panic attacks. Uh, I couldn't even hold food. I couldn't look at it. Um, because so, it made you so ill. Yeah, because it made me so ill. So my body would kind of go into fight-on-flight mode. Of course, yeah. I um, understand that. So I got to the point where it was like, I need to do something about this. And I realised, look, I have the power to beat this. Uh, so I started baking at home. And I thought, right, if I can bake it and I can eat it and I'll be OK, then I can get rid of that fear. Mm. Um, I went to the States many years ago and they had Cinnabon over there. And uh, I used to eat that every morning for <laughs> breakfast <laughs> when I was over there. So I started to bake that at home. Um, and it worked. And it worked. Honestly, it was... It, did wonders for me. Um, but, but how then do you go from that? I know people sort of said, oh, you know, we really like this, and you thought, well, maybe I can do, you know, make this commercial. But how, but how do you go from that, and I know you had a sort of a stall that was set up, to then setting up a shop not very long ago, which is a huge gamble. When I saw you'd done that, I was thinking, oh, I hope this works. <laughs> so now you're going to set up more shops. I mean, how is it... Why is it going from strength to strength like this? Mm. Yeah, I mean, when I, when I well, first apart, started... Apart from the fact that they're delicious, by the way. <laughs> I mean, when I first started the business, it was, yeah, it was just a market stall. And to be honest, I had no intention of it becoming, you know, this big. Mm. Um, it was more sort of a, a side hustle. But every time we were at the market, we had queues of people, we would sell out. People were coming from all across London, even people were coming from Wales, from Scotland, oh, wow. from Birmingham, just to Ealing to mm. buy these buns. Uh, so I decided to go on LinkedIn, similarly how I found you, actually. Yeah. Um, and I connected with hundreds of investors on there, finally found a few, um, pitched the idea and raised £100,000 to launch the business uh, mm. into a fully-fledged shop. Wow. It's the most incredible story. I was saying to Stephen in the break before you even came in, before you even smelt these amazing goodies, because they smell as good as they look. Um, but it's, your story is it's overcoming adversity, it's starting up a business, you're an entrepreneur, and you're just such a success story. I mean, Thank you've got you. one bakery already, you want to open another two more this year. I mean, this is just the start for you, isn't it? Yeah, honestly, yeah. I mean, it's, it, like you said, it's going from strength to strength. And, you know, it's something so fresh, and it's really made with love. Mm. And I think, you know, the customers and the public can see that. 
Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm super excited for us to be opening more stores this year. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it's fantastic, and to do it at such a young age. What are you, 23? 22. 22. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's remarkable, and you're know, all power to you, mm. Benjamin. They I, taste incredible. I really think that they taste incredible. Um, please come on up and one in Milton Keynes. I will. It's all, it's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you. It's really good to see you. Thank oh, you thanks very you. much. Pleasure to meet you, Benji. Oh, wow. Absolutely delicious. That is it from us, isn't it?